Hello, 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 and welcome to the virtual Ramadan kitchen. My name is Leila Mukheber, and I am your host for this special hour. I am the Director of Communications for UNRWA USA, and actually, I've noticed that my notes are off of my screen, so I need to find them. So we want to know where you're tuned in from, what it is that, uh, what your name is, and what your favorite Palestinian dish is. So please use the comments right now to let us know that information. This is going to be an incredible conversation in partnership with our partner, Mama's Palestinian Kitchen, and six legendary Palestinian chefs and food bloggers. Um, for those of you that are new to UNRWA USA, our vision is that the, until there is a just solution to their plight, a world where Palestine refugees thrive. To achieve this, UNRWA USA lifts up the voices, experiences, and humanity of Palestine refugees to secure American support for resources essential to every human being for the promise of a better life. If you wish to share in our mission, please give as generously as you can during this powerful hour. You already know this hour is going to be fun and that April is for Arab food. Let's also make sure that this time is as impactful as possible for refugees. I'd like to welcome to the screen um, Abbas from Mama's Palestinian Kitchen to tell us why they chose to partner with UNRWA USA again. Abbas, welcome. Abbas Hamida from Ohio. Hi, nice to be here, Leila. Um, it is a pleasure to have Mama's Palestinian Kitchen co-host this event this year with you once again with UNRWA USA. Um, we've been in existence now uh, roughly almost two years in July with Mama's Palestinian Kitchen. And we now have almost, uh, we're shy, about 5,000 members. We will be 100,000. So we're approaching 100,000 membership. Um, we just feel that we want to use our platform um, to help the community. And what better way than to help the Palestinians on the ground during the holy month of Ramadan, where we can have, um, you know, your generous donations coming in to UNRWA USA, where they will uh, be very helpful with Palestinians on the ground in Palestine. So um, we're proud to be part of this effort. And we ask you to please uh, donate generously and let's go ahead and help our people on the ground. So we're very proud as Mama's Palestinian Kitchen to be able to do that with UNRWA USA. Thank you for having us, Layla. Thank you so much, Abbas. We'll see you later on. All right. Um, I also wanted to say Lenten greetings to everyone who observes Easter. And we're just so glad to be here with all of you now. I will turn things over to my friend and colleague, Hani al Matun, Director of Philanthropy, to tell us more about how you are supporting refugees to, through today's virtual Ramadan kitchen. Thank you, Leila. Happy, happy Easter, Ramadan Kareem, everyone. Thank you for uh, choosing to spend some of your afternoon with us. My name is Hani al Madhoun. I work at UNRWA USA as the Director of Philanthropy, and I get to have the privilege of seeing the generosity of our community across the, this country and, you know, how we put it to work. This year is really specific for us for Ramadan. Obviously, there's too many challenges. We're focusing on food assistance for Palestine refugees. You may know that 70% of Palestine refugees qualify for food assistance. And, you know, that because 35% uh, say self-identify as extremely poor, the 35 other percent require, they state that they're poor. And ultimately, this is a lot of suffering. And, you know, with a big food package, we're doing a $50 food parcel that lasts the family for a month. And UNRWA is the greatest humanitarian engine for Palestine refugees by providing food assistance. Uh, briefly, you know, we may talk big numbers and all that, but quickly I want to share the story of Yazan, who's a, a boy from Gaza. You will see him in a minute on the screen. And I met him with the family about two years ago and my kids, you know, and he got along very well. He receives food assistance with his family. You know that when we talk about food assistance in a minute, you will see the food package. It's lentils, uh, chickpeas, cooking oil, rice, sugar, flour. And Yazan's favorite is the powdered milk that his situ makes it into yogurt and leaven. He likes to have leaven in the rice. 
So that's that's the stories we get, right? And ultimately, this is Zakat. This is the Zakat, the season for Zakat for generosity. And we'd love for you to send your donations to to our the families we work with. Owner, why you know the brand, you know food. Owner, why remains the connection that link that connects food and families in Palestine for years, for over seventy years. This has been going on, and we've been there and thick and thin for Palestinian refugees because you, all of you, because you care about this issue, because this is the cause that you show up for. So just one more statistics about this. 64% in a recent survey that done by UNRWA, 64% of families in Palestine choose to skip a meal or two because the adults want to make sure the kids can eat, right? Because they don't have food. Food insecurity is a real problem that affects families like Yazan. So your generosity will help families like Yazan and his family and a lot more people who need your support. And this doesn't have to be a million dollar gift. You know, your $5, your $10, your $25 make a big gift, make a big difference. Just last month, we raised $300,000 for Palestine refugees from the New York Gaza 5K. And average gift is, you know, $20, $25. So this is, this is the power of all of us. So to make sure, you know, we're ready for this, my colleagues Nahid, my colleagues uh, Venu are in standby looking at your donations by our website, which is www.onurwausa.org slash donate. And we'll keep you uh, we'll keep you abreast of those numbers as they come in. So please uh, match the moment or rise to the moment and deliver some generosity. And your gift really, honestly, your gift will bring families together. So this way, mom and dad and Gazan and his siblings can share a meal together as opposed to skipping meals when because they don't have, they want to save the kids the meal. So just think about the families that you will impact by this generosity. And obviously, please enjoy the food. There's too many great chefs and food bloggers who prioritize this issue. And I'm just like all of you excited to see their creations while keeping an eye on the donations and support because we really want to make sure that the families get to eat the Ramadan and after. So Ramadan Kareem, enjoy the show and back to my amazing colleague Leila. Thank you so much, Hanny. Oh, Hanny just always touches my heart with his stories and he spent a lot of time in Gaza throughout his life whenever he's been able to access it. I've also had the privilege to travel to Gaza um, five or six times now, a very rare privilege. So it's so important that we be showing up for our refugee siblings and be supporting these programs. Um, I know you all are here for multiple reasons, but the, the heart of the show is the food. Like Hanny said, the, the connection between food and families is unrest, so please make that happen. I'm about to pass the mic so you can meet six legendary Palestinian chefs and food bloggers. In order of appearance today, we have people from all around the world. We're going to start with May Kalkish of Almond and Fig, who's coming to us from Chicago, Nadia Tomili from Seattle. We have Maha Kailani of Make Delicious Happen all the way from London, and, uh, London, Canada. And then we have Dina of Cook with Dina from Texas, from the Dallas area. We have Izzedine Bukhari of Sacred Cuisine all the way with us from Jerusalem, Palestine. And lastly, you'll hear from Marah from Batikhu Jibne, which is such a cute channel name. I love it. Who will be delivering a message from Qatar um, this Ramadan. So yalla, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Um, my sympathy is to those who are fasting, but you will be able to enjoy these delicious things soon once you learn how to make them. In about half an hour's time, you'll also have the chance to ask questions directly of our guest presenters. So I'd like to bring up to the stage our first presenter and the co-founder of April is for Arab Food, May. Hi everyone, Ramadan, Mubarak, um, and Happy Easter. My name is May. I'm the face and the writer behind a blog called Almonds and Fig. I'm so honored to be here today among great company to collaborate with everyone. Awesome work that you guys do on the ground and among our chef and blogger community. So glad to be here. Um, April is such an awesome month. It's, uh, it's Ramadan this year, it's Easter this year, it's Arab Heritage Month, and it's also April for, is for Arab food. So, so such an exciting time to be sharing Palestinian and other uh, recipes from the region. Um, this year in April's for our food, we're working on the Mune. Mune is the pantry, it's the Arab pantry, and growing up in Palestine, it's loaded with incredible ingredients. To, um, to keep it 
on theme for Ramadan, I wanted to share this incredible recipe for jilab. Jilab is our fruit drinks in the Arab world. We call them, or in the Levant at least, we call them sharab. Sharab um, is usually a fruit uh, syrup that's condensed and usually it's uh, whatever's in season, whether it's grapes, whether it's dates, whether it's tooth, berries, um, and those get diluted with water. So jilab is no exception. It's uh, the, the drink for Ramadan. When I think of Jilab, it's definitely Ramadan time. And it's also the beginning for summer days. Um, what makes Jilab a Ramadan drink? It is loaded with important, uh, important ingredients, very simple ingredients from your pantry, but important ones. Dates is one of them. Ramadan is not complete with good dates um, to break the fast. And this drink is made um, with either um, date syrup, originally with grape syrup and today i'm using a mixture between the date syrup and the grape syrup the date syrup as adds a caramely taste a little chocolatey notes but the grape syrup is where the sweetness really comes uh, comes in with few flavorings and some interesting um thing about jilab i was so curious to find out why they called it jilab and i find out that jilab is uh, comes from the arabic verb Jalab and jalab means to bring. So this drink brings energy. It brings refreshment um, after a long day of fasting. Uh, from all the, you know, it's a it's a high calorie drink because of the ingredients that are in it, like dates and raisins. And to add to those ingredients, the garnishes are also uh, an important part of this drink. So. Um, you know, it's Ramadan when you see the streets of Al-Quds or Ramallah or, or Nablus loaded with these uh, street carts, shut up carts, uh, that are selling uh, customary drinks to the occasion, usually uh, Jalab, Arit Sous, Lemonade, uh, Amardine, and various drinks or laws, uh, drinks are important for the holy month of Ramadan. So you're here for the drink and we're going to get started. I'm going to make, to make this drink, you can make a whole pitcher and just leave it or um, a bottle and just leave it in your fridge and just dilute it with water when you need to. It is really uh, easy. It's a pantry staple. You could just make, but the best part about this drink are the ingredients that go in it. Okay, I hope I don't spill everywhere. Date, I'm gonna start with date syrup. So I'm gonna mix equal amounts, amounts. Whatever you decide to do, just mix equal amounts. And if you're using just date syrup, then the whole amount will be date syrup. So date syrup went on in this picture. And then I'm gonna uh, mix uh, equal amounts of grape syrup. Now, kharub or carob is also uh, customary to add to this drink. I don't have carob syrup, but kharub in Arabic. It is, um, it has a different flavor and it's really, really nice. Um, here we go. So hopefully that's an equal amount. And there's no right or wrong. The recipes, um, Palestinian and Arab recipes are so easy to adjust. To this, this is pretty much it. To this mixture, we're gonna add rose water. And that's the flavoring that goes into this drink. Now, depending on your rose water, you wanna add a little bit or as much as you want, but start with a teaspoon and adjust from there. So we're gonna go with about a, tea, oh, that's a little more than a teaspoon, but then, so you're going to mix all this together. You can keep this mixture, put it in a bottle or a jar, and just put it straight in your fridge. Uh, today, obviously, we're going to serve it as a drink, and I'm going to talk about the ingredient that makes this drink unique. Uh, so this is, I think, hopefully, mixed through. The drink, the important part about this drink, or how it was traditionally made, is using bakhur, incense. Bakhur is customary in the Arab world, whether it's for spiritual reasons, perfume, or even uh, flavorings. Specific bakhurs are used for this drink originally, and they would smoke usually either the date syrup, the grape syrup, or later on, they would start um, smoking the sugar that gets added into uh, the drinks. I'm not adding any sugar, and I'm not making a huge production out of this, so I am going to do uh, a fun smoking with bakhur or incense. And the bakhur that's used, I was doing some research on, on that, it's either Either um, often or customary, it's called jawi, jawi or luban. So I have, I was hoping I won't set my kitchen on fire while I'm chatting, but here we go. I'm going to add a charcoal. Oh, it's not coming. Here we go. This is really fun. I'm adding a charcoal to this vessel. Make sure it's heat proof. And this is not, you don't have to do this. You could just enjoy the drink as is. But since we're doing this live Ramadan show, I thought it would be fun. And this is the incense. So we're going to add a few droplets um, of incense just around the charcoal. And you're going to see and watch. And please handle with care. This thing gets hot. So I could smell it right away. It starts coming up. 
Here we go. There you go. Here we go. So I'm going to cover it so we can encourage the bachur or the smoke to come out. Here we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to smoke my glass. So I'm going to go on top of it. Don't touch uh, the vessel. Just go ahead and let your uh, glass absorb all that smoke and just put it in there. And the, the incense has an amazing, almost therapeutic, almost spiritual smell uh, to it. So we're going to smoke that. And for the sake of time, usually I would do it a little bit longer, but for the sake of time, I'm going to stop right here. That's how amazing so what i'm whoa what i'm gonna do is this mixture of date syrup and grape syrup and a little bit of rose water i'm gonna add a little bit to the bottom of my glass and definitely do this in a big pitcher if you're serving this for if thought um definitely serve it in a big uh pitcher this would be much easier and of course i like to do one part syrup to four parts water but you could do however you could adjust it to however you like definitely you want to add some ice so we're gonna go ahead and add, oh, my ice clumped together. You get the idea. We're gonna do some ice. This drink often also resembles summer. It's so refreshing. It's served ice cold, usually, usually with crushed ice. So it's really nice and refreshing. We're gonna add ice to this. Um, and to that, I'm gonna add water. It's very, this is how simple this drink is. The color of this uh, drink is very, um, it, it, it's amber in color, but sometimes you would find it almost uh, red in color. And that's just due to food coloring. A lot of uh, vendors, you see this drink usually uh, bottled and ready to use. And uh, sometimes food coloring is added, but sometimes also burnt sugar is added to these drinks to make them really like deep and darken in color. Look at how beautiful this color. This is a uh, natural color for the date syrup and the grape syrup. So. To that, the best part about this drink, like I said, are the ingredients that go on it. And this adds, if you're fasting all day, this adds to the energy and the calories that you would need uh, for the rest of the evening. To that, we're gonna add some pine nuts. You could do almonds, you could do cashews as well. And you would eat those with a spoon, it's so fun. And then since a drink has grape syrup, they add often, uh, you would find raisins. So I'm gonna add a little bit of raisins. And as the raisins and the pine nuts or the nuts, get soaked in the liquid. It is so fun. They become plump and really delicious. I'm going to give that a quick stir. Some of them will settle at the bottom of this drink. And since we have rose water in the drink, always garnish with what you use um, in your product. So here we go. Some rose petals to go on top just for fun and to tell people, hey, there's rose water in there. And there's one version of this Jalab drink to bring refreshment to bring energy to your day. Um, another way that's super easy and fun, same thing, you're gonna add a little bit of syrup to the bottom of a glass as much as you want. So one part syrup for me, four parts of water. But instead of just regular water, I am gonna add a little bit more refreshing spin on this. Uh -oh. My ice clumped together. To that, I'm gonna add a squeeze of lemon juice. Usually grapes are kind of tangy. Um, my grape syrup was not tangy at all. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. We're gonna add a little bit of a lemon wedge and sparkling lemon water. I think that would be a refreshing twist. Also almost like a mocktail um, for this drink. So here we go. Instead of water, just soda water, whatever flavor you want. And here you have it, gelade, two ways, a great drink to break your fast or, or to enjoy during the hot summer days. Thank you so much and so honored to be part of this um, Ramadan virtual iftar. beautiful you made me thirsty <laughs> i am um, this is nadia tomari from seattle thank you so much for joining us ramadan kareem and happy easter to everyone um i am uh, as i said i'm from seattle here i'm based in seattle and i'm palestinian and i'm a cooking instructor and a food blogger i um, focus on teaching the flavors of the arab world and mainly home cooked meals that you don't see out there in restaurants uh, my teaching doesn't just focus on the food, it also focuses on the traditions and, and, and the stories behind the food that we eat and we grow up with. Today, uh, we are going to be um, making a delicious condiment that I um, love and I always keep in my fridge. It's called mtawame, um, which in Arabic we call it mtawame. It's tomb sauce. Um, this is basically a basic sauce that you usually 
um, you would enjoy, generally you enjoy with fried chicken or roasted chicken or maybe um, a chicken sandwich or chicken shawarma. Uh, I'm going to show you at the end also how I like to eat it. Uh, and also stick around for a few, you know, twists that you can do to this simple sauce that we're going to uh, be making. Um, we have, you know, five ingredients that we need for this sauce. I'm going to need a food processor, uh, lots of garlic, garlic. Um, I need a whole head of garlic, just, you know, about 14 to 15 cloves uh, already, you know, peeled. And I have one egg, uh, egg white, just the egg white we're going to need for this recipe and a quarter of a cup lemon juice, freshly sweet lemon juice, and then salt. At the end, we're going to use some vegetable oil, just one cup of vegetable oil, to thicken the sauce, to thicken the mtawami. Uh, starting, you know, um, I already gave heads up, you know, to uh, my, um, uh, you know, to Layla that this is going to be loud. <laughs> so uh, when I turn it on, I think Layla is just going to um, mute me a little bit. So this is, I'm just adding my garlic cloves here, uh, as I said, you know, about 14 to 15 cloves uh, there, and then one egg white, just the egg white, a quarter of a cup lemon juice, and then one teaspoon of sea salt. So this is a sauce that you can keep in the fridge. Um, as I said, you know, it's always it's in my fridge. You can often use it. Um, I often use it if I'm barbecuing some chicken outside. I take some of the sauce with a brush, a brush on top of it. It gives it that really nice flavor. Uh, this is something that you can keep for about four or five days actually in the fridge as well. Um, and uh, before I turn this on, um, we're going to do this in two stages. The first one just blending all the ingredients that we have. And then I'm gonna come back on and just talk about the second stage and blend it again. So here we go. I'm just gonna start with my processor. How's it going, Layla? It's a great day. Yeah, Layla, uh, can't oh, wait to hear. Was I muted? <laughs> I was muted. So sorry. I was just saying how much I love tomb. And so I was wondering if you've ever made it. It's one of my favorite things. I, I would rather just get it from the restaurants, you know, but I love it. It's one of those essential places and everybody has a secret uh, formula for it. And now yeah. we get to see it live. I know we're so lucky to have an actual food instructor, a Palestinian food instructor from Seattle demonstrating us for this live. And hopefully people are taking notes so that when they make iftar or they make their Easter dinners or whatever meals they'll be creating during this month of Arab food making, um, that they can add this to just jazz up their dishes. But Hani, let's talk more. You were telling us, you know, really powerful stories from Gaza. And uh, I would love to hear kind of more of what our community could. Be. Oh, Nadia already finished. I'll be back. Well, you'll have to pause that story, Hani. I'll be back. All right. Back over to Nadia. I'm sorry, Hani, you know, to cut you off. But, you know, I just finished actually the first um, step of making this sauce. This is a very simple sauce to make really in four or five minutes um, and great to keep. So we're looking here at the consistency of yogurt, really, like that. So I just blended the garlic, egg white, lemon juice, and the salt. And then now is the next step. I'm going to be using just vegetable oil. And this is when we add it, we're going to be adding it in a drizzle, really like a hair, slowly, slowly. Um, I'm going to turn it on and then I'm just going to add it until everything is done. And you're going to notice, um, if you, I don't know if you can see it from the screen, that this is going to thicken. Even the sound of the machine is going to change a little bit. So I'm going to turn it on and, Hany, you can finish your story. Great. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Gaza is just amazing. They're resilient. There is a lot of, you know, uh, there's a lot of success stories. You know, we're very proud of the Palestinians that went to UNRWA schools or they've, they've grown up eating UNRWA food or got their uh, got their education or they got their vaccines uh, through the UNRWA system. And that's that's great. You know, we need smart, educated and healthy Palestinians for whatever the future holds. Nobody disagrees that, you know, what UNRWA does. And, you know, yes, and is one example of kids I met, you know, can you imagine being a parent and then yes, and wants a meal and then, you know, how would the mother feel or the dad? Like, hey, we feel like no fault of their own. They're hard workers, you know, where Venu and I were looking at statistics for a family where in the U in Gaza, they spend more than 30% of whatever income they have on food. That's 30% in America. Do you know how much money we spend from our income? 
about 10 percent so that's just tells you the food expensive unemployment is high up to north of 60 percent of the palestinians in gaza are unemployed and i do want to get to the you know blockade and siege those are still real there is a pandemic going on and we want your support because really like ultimately it's about food we want families like yazans and other kids to be able to have food with their families and your gift today of fifty dollars can deliver just that back to you later thank you hanny and actually back to nadia um, so here we go, the, what we're looking for, the consistency here, if you can see, it's more of like a Lebanese now uh, feel, you know, it's a little bit thicker. I'm just going to add it to, to the, my plate here. I hope you can see it. So this um, quantity that we made will make you about a cup and a half of um, tomb, limtawame. As I said, you can keep it in the fridge. Um, this is, um, I like to eat it. I know that we mentioned the chicken in the beginning, but my favorite way of eating it um, usually is with um, just some fresh um, tomatoes. Like I would take a tomatoes like that and just add some of the tawame on top of it, a little bit always of extra virgin olive oil and maybe summa, and this tastes just amazing. So that's just for the basic tawame. Uh, for those who follow me at uh, on my um, social media at Nadia Tumale, uh, you would notice that I always have to, I always like to do that uh, twist, you know, to my recipes. Uh, um, so this is one thing that I like to do with them tawame. So I'm just gonna actually take, prepare a plate like this with just the regular tawame here. I'm gonna keep it on the side, and then I'm gonna take, make another small plate like that. And then I'm going to bring some of the beloved spice, the za'atar. I'm going to add the za'atar on top of that and actually give it a mix. This is really brings, takes it like to a second, uh, to another level um, of deliciousness, I call it. This is, um, you can eat this, um, like my kids uh, like to call it, We I like to eat this with french fries, um, with some, uh, again, you know, with the tomatoes, with Tastes really, really fantastic. Here we go. I'm just gonna decorate it, and then another way I like to serve it. Also, here you go. A third plate, and I'm gonna replace my zatar with another beloved spice that we have, which is the summa, and I'm gonna mix that again. just to add that a little bit citrusy flavor to it. And here, you would, could have it as just a regular mtawame, like that, infused with a little bit of Palestinian za'atar, or, you know, infused with also Palestinian sumac. Uh, the ways that I like to eat it, as I said, with the tomatoes, with a little bit of the drizzle of extra virgin olive oil and sumac as well. Another way is to eat it with some fried eggplant. I love this. Just a little bit of any of these, this combination, you know, um, any of the, sorry, these three kinds with eggplant taste fantastic. Again, one more thing is um, just French fries, which is the way how my family like it. And finally, is with some crispy pita bread like that. Um, I do hope that you enjoyed this recipe. Please, please, um, um, it's so it's an honor to be part of this program today, and it's uh, to be also part uh, uh, part of this program. And with uh, the rest of the wonderful chefs and bloggers, please give support. Anorwa has a special uh, place in our heart. Thank you so much for keeping the hope for our Palestinian people going. So thank you so much for having me. Hello, my name is Mahad Kilani. I am a Palestinian food blogger. I started my food blog, my Instagram and my TikTok back in 2020, um, around when the lockdown happened. And I wanted to um, just show my creativity in the kitchen. I wanted to appeal to those that didn't know much about Palestinian cuisine, those that 
are maybe Palestinian, but they don't know how to make certain dishes. Um, I love to show hacks, um, just modern twists of Palestinian food. And that's exactly what I'm showing you here today. Oh, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for this invitation to UNRWA. Um, I'm so happy to be among great friends here and such talented people. Now, the start of the show here is this beloved maftul. Maftul is very well known in Palestine, but we all know it as a chicken-based dish with the broth. But the way that I'm modernizing it here today is by creating it into a really healthy salad. Who needs quinoa when you have maftul? So I already have this cooked. Um, I cooked this um, earlier um, with just some salted water for about 10 minutes until it was um, just kind of like al dente. So I'm going to put this here in my big salad bowl. And you can make this salad yours. You can put whatever vegetables, whatever herbs, whatever spices, whatever you like. So over here, um, I have some parsley. I have half a red onion. I have a sweet bell pepper, a cucumber, um, a tomato, and an eggplant, which is also, I know, very beloved to Palestinians. Um, I air fried this until it was um, cooked and crispy. And so all you do is just basically put it all into one salad bowl. I need the help of my spoon. And the full recipe is on my page. And honestly, you can make this salad yours. Um, during Ramadan, all we see is basically like fatouche on the tables, which is lovely. I love fatouche. Um, but this is just a different um, thing, you know. Um, it'll definitely surprise people. And honestly, whenever I've served this, everyone has loved it. And to add a little bit of sweetness, I have some soaked raisins. You can add cranberries, you can leave them out, whatever you like. And I have some roasted walnuts. You can choose whatever kind of nuts you like. Um, I have walnuts here. On my page, I used um, roasted pistachios. But walnuts will do the trick here. And now my favorite part is the dressing. The dressing is so good and very Palestinian inspired. Um, over here, I have um, olive oil, I have some vinegar, some sumat, um, a little bit of za'atar, some Aleppo pepper, um, just so many different things. You can make this yours as long as you have your olive oil and your acid, as long as it's like vinegar or lemon juice, you can change it to whatever spices, whatever herbs that you like. So I'm just going to give that a quick mix. And then pour it all on top. And this dressing gets soaked up um, by the maftoud and it's so good. Like it's so good, so tangy. Um, so I'm just gonna give it a quick mix here. And the eggplant soaks up all that deliciousness, the maftoud. This is just a nice, like healthy way of eating maftoud. You don't have to always have it in, you know, the chicken based dish. This is just another way of serving it, which I personally love. And there you go. Because I prepared the maftoud earlier, it kind of, um, kind of stuck together, but that's okay. If it's freshly made, it won't be as stuck together as mine is. <laughs> And I already smell the aroma. <laughs> it smells so good. I smell that za'atar. I smell that vinegar. I smell that olive oil. And these little pieces of eggplants, they're just going to soak it all up. And the maftoud, oh, it's so good. And it's just going to be like a nice, interesting addition to your iftar table. Um, you can consider this even as an appetizer, not really even a salad, because it's so hefty with ingredients and um, vegetables, and the maftoul is very filling as well. But there you go. Palestinian maftoul salad, it's so refreshing. You definitely have to give this a try. Thank you, Unurwa, for inviting me. And um, I will hand it back to you, Leila.
Hi guys, it's me, Dina, from Cook with Dina. I'm Palestinian American. Um, and before I finish my intro, I just want to thank Leila and Diala for hosting this event. It's beautiful, beautiful cause. And I really hope everybody is helping out with that $50 donation. $50 is nothing to us uh, here in America. We spend it going to Starbucks with the family. So don't ever um, uh, overthink the donations. A little goes a long way, trust me. Um, anyway, I'm born and raised in Texas. I'm from Sida to Dahir and Palestine. I've never been to Palestine, unfortunately. Most of my family moved from Palestine to Kuwait and from Kuwait to Jordan, and I was born in Texas. So we say y'all, um, I've got a little bit of a twang and um, I love bringing Palestinian food to life, uh, especially here in America. And that's why I started my social media page. If you know me on a personal level, you would know I've always been a foodie. I grew up in the food business. Um, my parents have Middle Eastern stores here in Texas. Um, so food is just second nature to me. Um, what I am making today is actually uh, showing you some Palestinian staples that can be great as an appetizer or as a meal, especially if you're vegetarian, this is perfect for you. Lots of these are gluten-free as well. Not everything though. Let me show you. I need to move my camera so I can show you my appetizer board that we're gonna put together. All right, so here is our board. Happy Ramadan, by the way. Sorry, I've not used to doing lives all the time. But here you've got your board. I've got some baba ghanoush, which is a delicious roasted eggplant dip with tahini, garlic, lemon juice, and salt. I've got the recipe for all these things on my Instagram and other social media pages, Cook with Dina. Um, here you've got some creamy hummus, Lebne, which is a kefir cheese. It's basically like a strained yogurt. Um, and I've topped it with some fresh mint. And here you've got um, mini mana'ish, uh, za'atar pies. You can't get more Palestinian than having za'atar and olive oil. So um, it's, it's just a great way to start your meal. So when you're breaking your fast, definitely you always want to start with dates. So here's our dates that we're adding to our board. And um, also some dried fruit. It gives you like a good restore on the energy that you've lost throughout the day. So we're gonna add that. I put it on some bamboo skewers. Um, something you uh, should know about me is I love putting everything on a board. I love charcuteries. Um, it's really fun for me. And it's just something that um, I like to give a Palestinian twist to, or a, 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 you know, um, make it more simplified for the person that lives here in America. Like I'm known to go to the grocery store and um, share basically how you can make a meal using American groceries, which is really cool. They really enjoy that. So um, what we're, we have here so far is the three dips, our dates, our dried apricots. We're gonna start garnishing our dips and then we'll garnish our board. On our hummus, we're gonna top it with some pine nuts. and some olive oil. By the way, my olive oil is from Sirat al-Dahir. It is from Palestine, from my homeland. Um, I have a friend that's father has a olive oil, uh, olive farm, and so I'm very lucky to get it from there. We're also gonna put some olive oil on our labne. Very simple presentation, but a little goes a long way. You'll see how it looks when we're all done. On the baba ghanoush, we'll be topping it with some pomegranates. I just love the sweet tangy crunch that pomegranates gives. And then we're just going to go ahead and put our spoon in so it's easier to serve and top that with olive oil. Um, if you notice, a lot of our meals do have a lot of olive oil in them. It's very healthy for you. It's a great fat and it's wonderful for your diet. So now we're going to be adding some pickles. Those go great with these dips. And now we're gonna put some cucumber. I like to use the cucumber as a board and I'll show you why in just a second. It acts as a really great board uh, barrier, like a little wall for anything that might be loose that could fall off the board. 
just like this. And then using this as a guide for us, we're gonna go ahead and put in our pita chips. See how the cucumbers are just holding it all in place? All right, now we'll be putting some tomatoes. Some really big staples in the Palestinian diet is olives, uh, za'atar, the zit, olive oil, fresh vegetables. It's a very healthy diet. It's very beautiful. I love it. All right. And then we'll be putting some jarjir, which is also known as arugula. Let's put some here to add some color. And some um, here in the middle. Put some bell peppers. It's always fun putting together a charcuterie. This is great for guests. This is great if you're introducing um, Palestinian cuisine to somebody that might not be familiar with it. It's not such a intimidating way of uh, introducing it to the first time. Of course, some Palestinian green olives. We've got some radishes. And then we've got some breadsticks. And this comes together very quickly, as you can see. The only problem we have today is that I'm still fasting, so we can't dig in, which is very, very unfortunate for me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wrap it up and keep it waiting for us to devour at a thought time. In case you're wondering um, why we can't eat during the day, it's basically from sunrise to sunset is when we don't eat. Um, so it's doable. We wake up before sunrise and have suhoor usually. This would actually make a great suhoor board as well. Um, and that's pretty much it for my board. Let me come back on camera. Can y'all see everything great? It is absolutely stunning. <laughs> I know I speak Thank for everyone. You. I just want to say, wow, the colors. It's a beautiful Palestinian rainbow board of healthy Thank goodness. You. And you just made magic happen in just a couple oh. of minutes. You alongside of all of our other presenters so far. And we have two more to close out the, the demo portion. But I want everyone to stick around because we're going to have a live Q&A in about 10 minutes time. And it's worth sticking around. Dina, that's really bravo, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. finished a little faster than I expected. but Well, you've I done your really Palestinian <laughs> siblings proud. And Thank I you. think all of us are going to have to make that board for this evening's meal because yes. it's perfection. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much for hosting me. Of course, yeah. of course. I just came on because I wanted to thank you and I wanted to remind everyone watching, hit the share button on your screen. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, hit share. If you're having trouble hitting the donate button, it's because YouTube doesn't hyperlink it in the comments. So copy paste it, put it into your browser, make that donation, get these recipes because mm -hmm. they're our gift to you courtesy of our chefs. If you make a donation today. And more importantly, you know that that donation is going to provide food for families and children like Yezen in Gaza. So please do not miss your chance to do just a little good that's going to go such a long way. And it takes even quicker than the time to make this gorgeous charcuterie board. <laughs> you know, will we see your face before we transition to our next chef? Yes, let me try to um, get back. Sorry Everyone that's that. new to the broadcast, don't ever be sorry. Please tell us your name, where you're tuned in from, and what is your favorite Palestinian food. We want to know. This is a celebration of culture, of family, of beautiful resilience of Palestinians and Can you see me? refugees. Yes, we see you. That was excellent. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you so much. Okay, Dina, Thank we'll you see so you much. in the Q&A. Thank you. Okay, I wasn't planning to come on screen, but I hope you heard the message and that you take action. And I am going to bring to the screen from Jerusalem, Palestine, again, live, we have Izzuddin Bukhari of Sacred Cuisine. Welcome, welcome. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Ramadan Kareem. I wish uh, the Muslim uh, people uh, easy fasting and also our Christians, uh, friend, also easy fasting on the limit. Uh, this month uh, is uh, special. This time is special because it's Ramadan. 
for the Muslims and also for the Christian, it is uh, the Easter fasting and it is also a spring, which means we have a lot of beautiful produce uh, coming this season. Uh, I'm Azadeen Bukhari from uh, the old city of Jerusalem, uh, Palestine. Uh, I am the founder of Sacred Cuisine. Sacred Cuisine as a company focus on telling the Somi food. The Somi food basically is the vegan food in uh, our culture. It's since thousands of years and it is coming from the lenity practice. And the best example of this practice and what you brought to us dishes to the table is the falafel. Falafel was created because of uh, the Lenin fasting and that's why we have falafel. So this period contributed heavily to our cuisine to have many delicious vegetarian vegan dishes. And that's exactly what I celebrate in my company. I focus on cooking vegetarian and vegan uh, Palestinian food with a twist. Uh, also, I do food tours in the old city of Jerusalem, cooking classes. I'm very passionate about sharing the Palestinian uh, culture and cuisine with the world. And that's why today I chose for you a very special dish. Uh, it's called the Akub. Uh, first of all, before I jump into the Akub, I want to thank Onura and everybody is joining and contributing and supporting uh, people in Gaza. It means a lot to me because my mother family, they... Uh, refugees from Ramle to Gaza. So uh, I basically every summer I used to go to Gaza since I was born up till 2000. So I have many relatives in Gaza, my aunts and also my sister live in Gaza. And Gaza is such a beautiful city since so many uh, beautiful memories in Gaza. And it's so sad to see the situation of Gaza today and since uh, the siege and uh, that's why I really appreciate uh, your effort in joining and supporting uh, the Palestinian people, especially in Gaza. And uh, that's why I chose actually this time uh, for this recipe to uh, cook akub. Akub as a recipe and as a dish, it is very special. It's a delicacy and it is right now uh, in the season. So we see uh, akub everywhere in the market. And who are not familiar with akub, akub basically in English called gondila, gondila, something like this. And it is part of the artichoke family. It have a taste similar to artichoke, asparagus, delicate taste, still earthy, and it is something divine. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to cook it because it's come with these thrones, which is actually very sharp and uh, most of the time you spend a cleaning this akub and this is how it is uh, this is how they sell it and it is like 70 percent to clean the farmers kind of pre-clean it for us but still you have to clean it when you buy it as it is or when you forge it it will be covered with the thrones uh, but this delicacy it's now in season and one of the way we cook it we cook it with a dried yogurt a dried yogurt is basically what we call kishik. It's the contribution of the Bedouin to the cuisine. They figure out a way to uh, preserve dairy in the desert and in the hot weather. And with this kishik, we have the most famous dish which we eat in every occasion, either from birth to graduation to a wedding. We eat a mansaf, which is with this a dried yogurt stew and a lamb meat. Uh, but there is other series of dishes we do with the dried uh, kishik, such as the akub and also the green almond. Green almond is also in season, and this is one of the delicacy also we cook is a green almond. So today for this recipe, I decided to take akub and a green almond and cook them together. And actually the flavor is amazing. Uh, it took a lot of time to cook and prepare. So I did it way before we had our iftar about two hours. So we ate long time ago, but I kept for you a plate uh, to kind of give you idea uh, how the dish look like. And it is basically on a on a bed of uh, basmati rice with some uh, zafran, real zafran, because this dish deserve uh, deserve uh, the extra step. Uh, so basically, the way you cook this dish is very simple. You take the kishik if you have it, the dry yogurt, and you basically cut it to small pieces, shred it, soak it in water for like 30 minutes. And after this, run it through a strainer and make sure you take all the small glums and everything and then put it to boil. Add some bay leaves and cardamom, which is necessity for this dish. 
and this is what will bring a lot of flavor and you don't need to add any salt because this is very very salty uh, and after you finish cleaning your akub uh, as uh, the process goes, when you clean that coop, uh, we basically clean it and after we finish, we put it in a salty water to ensure, again, the thorns does not grow. And after that, we blanch it, we cook it in water. I like to cook it extra to make sure it melts in your mouth. And after it is cooked, uh, that coop and the green element, I add them to the yogurt and I let them cook and simmer for like 30 minutes at least so the flavors can come together. And uh, this dish uh, as a mansaf, uh, I mean uh, as a kub with a dried yogurt uh, stew, it have very special flavor. And it is fermented, yogurty, uh, dairy dish. Uh, so some people really love it. If you love it, if you like the dish, you really love it. And some people kind of feel it, it's a little bit heavy, uh, which you can use yogurt to kind of break down this uh, strength of uh, the fermented uh, yogurt uh, and dairy uh, and uh, of course buy nuts and almonds uh, for extra protein and also to give the a crunch on uh, a, on the dish and uh, also this is uh, the dish actually akub uh, as a recipe it's really good uh, kind of way to explore the to display the Palestinian cuisine as far as far improvising and as far utilizing uh, in our cuisine what I like about it we use uh, the, uh, the vegetable the produce on a different stages such as the green element we use it uh, we eat it when it is still the green and uh, here in Palestine uh, when we are when I used to be a kid after I finish the school you go out from the school and there will be a farmer selling some green almond or a green cherry or a green plum they will sell you some with salt and this is like one of the way we as a little kid grow up eating almond in palestine we would just crunch it put it in the salt and continue to eat and uh, this idea you know me as a chef now this is my career and uh, this is what i love to do it just to blow my mind how we take this uh, how we improvise and find a way to utilize uh, the vegetable in such different way when it's still a green such as frike it's a green wheat it's picked when it's a green and it's totally have a different dimension portfolio which is give us more diversity in the same ingredient in itself and also for something such as a kub or even fava bean which take a lot of work and preparation to do people still do it even though green bean grow in different parts of the world still here in Palestine we cook it as it's a green not uh, also as a dry so this is uh, one of the things I really enjoy uh, uh, as a chef especially being in Palestine especially in this season it's one of my favorite seasons after uh, the olive uh, season of course because this season have so much of a green it's bring beautiful interesting and a delicacy ingredient to bring uh, to our table and basically I cooked a kub, uh, for this season five times this is the fifth time and it is about to finish it is very short season uh, so I'm very happy uh, also to do this recipe for this fundraising and uh, I hope you enjoy and for who don't have a kub or a green almond you can substitute it with the green fava bean if you have access to green fava bean or you don't have access even with cauliflower we have a dish uh, the mtafaye, which we make out of uh, deep fried cauliflower cooked with the kishik uh, there is many series of uh, dishes coming with the kishik not only the mansa with the lamb and uh, there's uh, uh, many other dishes they celebrate uh, the vegetables are in season uh, so I hope uh, you enjoy and I hope you will try it. Uh, if you have any question uh, about the recipe, contact me at Sacred Cuisine. Uh, I'm from the old city of Jerusalem. Also, we provide some of these ingredients to, uh, to be delivered to your home. So make sure you check uh, Sacred Cuisine uh, for a future product about to join the market, which is we will be able to bring you from the old city to Jeru of Jerusalem to your table some Palestinian ingredients.
uh, I hope you will enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm Mara. I'm one of the faces behind the Instagram page Babtiq uh, Jibne. For those of you who do not know, I share this page with my mom. It's essentially a food blog where we uh, share Palestinian and Middle Eastern recipes with the world. Um, we've had the page for a couple of years now, I believe, and the main aim of the page has always been to share Palestine with the world, to share the culture, the heritage, the food, but also the struggle. Um, so this is why it means the world to us uh, to be here today amongst all of you. Uh, so we would like to thank Leila for having us. We would like to thank the entire UNRWA team for putting something so special together during the month of Ramadan. Um, it's a cause that is very close to our hearts and um, it feels very special to be in the position to spread awareness and to raise money for Palestinian refugees. And so in honor of today's Ramadan virtual kitchen uh, for Palestinian refugees, we have decided to share an authentic Palestinian dessert recipe, Knafa uh, Nabil or Knafa Naame. It is an authentic, delicious recipe that you guys will love. It's very simple to make and it's perfect for the month of Ramadan. So we hope you guys tune in and enjoy. All right, everyone. So let's get started on the Fereke Knafa. We're going to need a few simple ingredients that we're going to combine in a large bowl to form a dough. So we will start with three and a half cups of flour, half a cup of semolina, you can use fine or coarse, half a cup of cornstarch, and half a cup of powdered milk, along with one teaspoon of baking powder. We're going to mix these together, and then we will add half a cup of slightly melted ghee. We're using vegetable ghee, and we're going to rub it into the rest of the ingredients. So once it's all rubbed in, we're going to add one and a half cups of room temperature water and we're going to knead until we make a dough or until a dough forms. Feel free to add a little bit of extra water gradually if your dough does not come together because the amount of water depends on the type of flour. Your dough should look like this. Then we will place our dough in between two sheets of parchment paper and we will roll it out to a one centimeter thickness. And once it's rolled out, we're going to transfer it to a baking sheet and we will preheat our oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit while the dough rests for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes of resting, we're going to lower the temperature of the oven to the lowest possible temperature and we'll bake the dough for exactly 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, we're going to leave the dough to air dry for 5 plus hours. You can leave it overnight and it should look something like this. And then we're going to do part by part. We're going to place it in the food processor and grind it to a fine consistency. And there you have it. Our knafa dough is ready and we are ready to assemble our knafa naame or knafa nabilsi. We're going to start with around one and a half tablespoons of ghee that we're going to spread all over the bottom of the pan that we will make our knafa in. You want to make sure the ghee goes everywhere, even on the sides. To around one and a half cups of our fedeke knafa that we just made, we're going to add two tablespoons of cold simple syrup and rub it in. Then we're going to spread the fedeke knafa into the pan and you'll notice here my mom presses gently every time she adds more and this is to ensure that there are no empty spots so you want to press gently. Once we have a nice even layer we're going to take a pan of the same size and we're going to press into the layer and that will make sure that really everything is even. And now comes the best part. Um, so for the cheese, we're using desalted akkawi. You can use nabilsiye, you can use mshallale, um, whatever's available where you are. So you want a nice generous layer and you want to pat it down at the end and add one last sprinkle of our fariki knafa. To cook it, we're going to place it over the stovetop and as soon as you hear a slight sizzling sound, you want to begin rotating it and you will rotate the entire time that it is cooking. If the cheese releases any water, you want to take a paper towel and just pat it down slightly to soak up any excess water that comes out. After a few minutes of turning, I would say around 8 to 10 minutes, could be less, could be more, your knafa will turn a nice golden amber color around the edges and that's when it's ready to flip. You want to flip it in a slightly larger pan and then right away you want to ladle the very hot simple syrup over the top.
And of course, like with all Arab desserts, you want to go in with a generous layer of ground pistachios all over the top and it's ready to enjoy. So we hope you guys enjoyed that recipe. Please do send us your remakes on Instagram if you guys decide to make the knafa. And we would like to close off by saying thank you again for having us um, and reminding everyone to please donate towards the cause. Um, we are infinitely blessed to be able to make spreads of delicious dishes all throughout the month of Ramadan, while others, families in Gaza, families in Palestine, they rely on the aid that they receive from UNRWA. Um, to feed their children the basic necessities. So please donate. Do not forget the plight of Palestine's refugees during this blessed month. And Ramadan Mubarak. Now from Chicago, our new communications manager, Diela Ghanem, and all of our wonderful chefs. I'm going to bring them on screen. All right, everyone. First, I just want to give everyone a round of applause. <laughs> That was amazing. What a show. And Diala, please, uh, the mic is yours. Thank you, Leila. And thank you to all the chefs that were able to make it here today. Amazing, amazing work. I feel really bad for all of us who are fasting today. I am sure people are, it was very difficult for them to watch. But I'm also very uh, confident that people will be uh, taking all those recipes and including them in their Islam menus moving forward. So we do have a couple of questions here from the audience um, and from us as well. So I will get us started. Our first question is from Zach Grenem, and he is asking what inspired all the chefs to become food bloggers? Well, whoever wants to take a stab at that question, please feel free to do so. You know, we can um, unmute Nadia. Did you want us to repeat the question? Yeah. No. Oh. You can go ahead, please. We in, in order of the screen, anyone who wants to chime in? We are muted, so that's why, you know. Thank you so much for the, your questions. You know, I moved here to the United States about a little bit over 25 years ago. Uh, for me, uh, one of the things, I started cooking at a very young age. I flipped my first ma'lube, I was 12 years old. <laughs> After insisting, insisting on my mom that I need to flip that. I fell in love with food at a very young age. I moved to the United States and I really missed missed that family meals that we used to have. I moved actually here for work in the business world, you know, in the computer world. And I came and I decided that I would like to continue this um, journey and give it, give that taste that I had to my kids as well. Because I started my uh, life here and then later on I had three um, boys and they love and enjoy the food. Um, and I wanted to share also the stories that comes behind this food as well. And with that also, I started teaching and um, sharing, you know, um, the food and the culture with their schools, with neighbors, with friends. And yeah, and this is, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> that is beautiful. Did anyone want to share also their reason? Go ahead. Yes. So I think everybody surrounded, uh, like that's in my circle of friends, our family got sick of my food pictures on my personal Instagram page and on my Facebook page. They were like, you need to just go ahead and make a page for your food because that's all you're posting anyway. Might as well share it. And I had a lot of people that would come to me and ask how to um, simplify cooking. I don't like staying in the kitchen for many hours like my mom does. She, she'll be in the kitchen for hours and there's like not a lot of measurements, but her food is, mashallah, it's the best, you know? So I, it took a lot of time for me to get my measurements down using the cup and tablespoon and teaspoons, you know, the real measuring tools, mishkaset shay, okaset may, and all that stuff, you know? <laughs> so um, a lot of people are like, you need to share this because we don't have measurements either. Our moms don't measure. So um, that's why I started my page because first off, I just love posting about food and, uh, they wanted my, like, you know, people around me wanted the recipes that I was writing. And they were like, we're sure other people are going to want the same. And alhamdulillah, boom, like three years ago, I started it. So I'm really proud of 
where it's where it's going. I'm just all over the place trying to keep <laughs> up with social media. <laughs> Sorry, it takes me a second to unmute. It's so beautiful to hear from each one of you. And in fact, I want to ask you questions for hours, but we also want to respect your time. And I know that some of you have commitments after this call. Um, you're teaching classes or it's late at night in Jerusalem or you have you know families to, to get to. And so we want to make sure that we um, respect that time. And I would love to see if you'd be interested to do a part two with us at some time where we can either talk to you individually on our social media or do another conversation with all of you since we are a bit at time for today's program. Um, Diela, if you wanted to add anything there. Um, I couldn't agree with you more, Leila. I wish we could sit and speak about everything that we have in mind and all your stories and uh, all your inspirations and dishes, but we are at time. So we are going to think about having a part two of this where it's more discussion based and everyone can have some air time. So thank you so much again for your time and for your generosity and we will be in touch. Yes, before we end the show, I just want to repeat my thanks and we want to bring on the, the fundraising team so that they can give us a reminder of the reason why we're all here. All of you chefs showed us the most beautiful dishes and you put your heart into your food and thank you for your endorsement of this important work and our mission to make life better for Palestine refugees all across the Middle East, but especially right now in Gaza and meeting their food needs. Um, we will see you soon, inshallah. We can't wait to connect with you more on social media. We hope everyone follows these various pages. We will share all the links. All the links are actually in the description of the video. So please go and follow Nadia. Maha, May, Zadine, Dina, and UNRWA USA. And at this point, I'm going to welcome, like I said, to the stage, our fundraising team. Thank you. Uh, hi. hi, everyone. Good to be back. Uh, um, happy Friday. I'm surprised nobody said happy Friday. So how are you guys feeling? How are things going? Nah, you know? Hungry, very hungry. Yeah, I, I, I really feel the same way. Um, everything I saw was just absolutely incredible. So amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Well, Great. Nice and, uh, donations that came in as well. Uh, how, how's the fundraiser going so far? Vinny? So I'm literally calculating as we speak and we just got a donation. So I'm going to add to that. So we have, we have almost $1,700 in donations so far and Great. one new recurring plan. So thank you to everyone that made their generous donations. We want to keep it going. Um, and so, you know, I was just thinking, Hanny, you know, there's got to be something that we can offer for. So, uh, yes, uh, it's the, right? the month of generosity where people are, you know, asking for this. So let's just throw in a good deal for our amazing audience and uh, chefs, anybody who wants to take us up on this offer. So, Vena, what do you have? What do we so, have? Offer. Obviously, we all know that if you've made a donation today, that you're going to be getting the recipes from our amazing, incredible chef, chefs and bloggers. But I want to do it one up. So if you make a donation of at least $50 or you create a new recurring plan, monthly donation with UNRWA USA, you will get a beautiful Gaza, Gather for Gaza t-shirt before Eid. Um, and if we can pull up the design by chance of what the t-shirt will have on it, um, so make a $50 donation and Hanny, I think I want to be a bit more generous about the time we said before 3 PM Eastern, but I'm sure that there are so many viewers there that were really immersed in the video. So I want to give until 3 30 PM Eastern, I'm going to give an extra half an hour to go make your donation, give at least $50, um, or become, yes, one of our first 50 monthly donors. And you'll get a really, really cool gather for Gaza t-shirt. I think that it's, it's a sweet deal. And most importantly, You'll be providing food assistance for so many refugee families in need. The need is greater, no greater than now. That's wonderful. I, I think this is great. And folks, remember, this is really about the families. This is what we're doing here to provide food for families, for their parents. We make sure, you know, they have food assistance. A $50 donation will deliver food for families who need it and families we may, they may not eat otherwise. So... I hope you take us up on this offer of token of appreciation. And, you know, our colleagues, Nahid and Vino, logged in on this call from New York, where they are based now. But we're thrilled that you were able to join us. Nahid, any final thoughts as we close this? 
Uh, well, please, on behalf of these wonderful chefs uh, and the emptiness in your stomach, please fill your hearts. Don't forget to donate. And thank you for showing Palestine refugees that Americans care. I want to add one thing, if it's okay. So we're at almost $1,900. And every single person that's donated so far has already qualified for the T-shirt. Wow. So that's the fireworks. Awesome. I mean, the fireworks. We're, we're getting at least $50 in gifts. So I just want to thank everyone and keep it going. Really keep it going. Um, you know, and you'll get an awesome T-shirt before Eid. For the record, that's 400 months of food assistance for families in Gaza, the amount that we've received. So let's keep that going. Thanks, guys. So, yes, more food for families. And before we go, guys, can we give a big shout out to our amazing host, our amazing MC, Layla? Bravo. Layla, Yatikil Afia, it's all you. Thank you, guys. Keep up the good work. And we're waiting for your donations. We're standby. Any questions? We're here. Thank you. Thank you, Shabab. I'll catch you all later. My dear, dear UNRWA USA colleagues just shared with you all the ways you can provide food for Palestine refugees this month. They offered you so many incentives from receiving a Gather for Gaza shirt, which is super gorgeous, a cool shirt designed by Zane D out of Seattle, a Palestinian designer. And so, uh, and the recipes, the recipes from today's chefs, which is an exclusive gift for anyone who donates. So please, $50 or more, Provide food for a family for an entire month. Do something good. And remember, it is zakat eligible. If that's something that's meaningful to you, give generously and it will be returned to you tenfold, inshallah. So please come through with your donations. Every single dollar counts and it all adds up. For everyone who donates today, again, the recipes of the show, courtesy of the chefs, and the $50 to start a monthly gift, a cool gather for Gaza shirt. I can't emphasize that enough. Thank you to the chefs, the supporters, our beloved viewers. Shout out to the entire Under USA team behind the scenes. Abbas and Mama's Palestinian Kitchen community. I hope you join their group. And most importantly, the Palestine refugees that we exist to serve and our colleagues across the Middle East, most of whom are refugees themselves, working day in, day out under the most challenging of circumstances, under occupation, under blockade, under military assaults and war, and we need you to show up for them so they can carry on these life-changing UNRWA programs for as long as they are needed. That's our show for today, folks. Ramadan Kareem, happy early Easter. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all of the support that you are providing and for showing Palestine refugees that Americans care. Till next time.